Hey guys, and welcome to tonight's episode. So tonight I'm gonna to continue working on my Saab 95 air wagon. Uh, sorry, it's been a few weeks. I've been working crazy hours at work, so I haven't really felt like getting into the garage and working on the car, but tonight I have a chance. So the goal for tonight is I'm gonna work on trying to clear the check engine light that has been kicking my ass, but I'm gonna try and replace the low pressure bypass valve or some fancy Saab name for blow off valve, which I bought for it was like $16 online. So I'll try replacing that. And then if that doesn't work, then I'm gonna have to start uh, looking into the vacuum lines and seeing if I have a vacuum leak somewhere, but I don't really have any new lines tonight. So I probably won't get into that if it doesn't work. And then I'm also gonna try and change the transmission fluid. Um, so if you've never changed the transmission fluid on a car before, it can actually provide you a lot of benefits for shifting feel. And this car has been um, just struggling sometimes when you're at a stop to Go into first or reverse, you have to like double clutch to get it to go into gear. And it's actually, my old Volkswagen, I, when I first bought the car, I wouldn't ever go into fifth gear without double clutching. And all I did was change the fluid and it was good as new. So, hopefully, the same goes for this. Uh, it doesn't look as uh, easy to replace the fluid in this one, though, just based on the access to the transmission. There's a, a drain plug, a leveling port on the side of the transmission, and then a fill port on the top. Uh, so you have to, it just looks like it's going to be a pain to get to all three of those, but hopefully we can get it done and hopefully we get that check engine line cleared. All right, hope you guys enjoy. Okay guys, so here I am in the engine bay. And this right here is the blow-off valve. So it looks like this one actually has an aftermarket one installed. But uh, what I'd like to show you is I should have checked this before I went out and bought a new one. But as I followed the vacuum line back here, it's hard to see, but there it looks like there's a, a nipple on the end of this component that is missing a uh, vacuum line. And then I just have to look around in the area see what I can see, and I found a vacuum line that's not attached, so kind of hard to see, but yeah. This vacuum line is missing its home, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reattach this, and I'm gonna drive the car and see if it clears the code, or I'll reset the code and drive the car and see if it comes back in, and then I'll debate whether I wanna put the new um, blow-off valve I got in or not. I can't believe I didn't check this before I ordered the part, but I guess that's how it goes. And then... All right, so I was able to get this plastic cover off, so you'll be able to see better if I can get the lighting right. Uh, but there's a vacuum line down there, it fell off, and it looks kind of loose, like it's kind of old and worn out, so I put a zip tie on it. Hopefully that'll help hold it for now. Probably can see it replaced. But I think I'm gonna try that before I replace the blow-off valve, because it looks like it does have an aftermarket one on here, so. Maybe that'll help me get a little bit more boost. All right, so now I'm gonna start moving the, taking the battery out so I can get to the transmission fill port. Make sure you can always get the fill port open before you go ahead and take the drain part out for the transmission oil, obviously. You can see the transmission fill port, which is right behind this, looks like AC line here. So this just looks like it's a maybe five or seven mill millimeter hex. Get that out. So I'll take that out, then I'll jack the car up and uh, take out the leveling plug and the drain plug. All right, so it took a lot of PV blaster and a long breaker bar, but I finally got that plug out. Um, so now it's time to jack the car up and go down below and. See if I can't find the leveling port and the drain plug. 
So after jacking the car up, I realized I probably could have done it with just jacking it up to get the wheel off because here is the drain plug hiding back here. And then the fill plug or the leveling plug is on, on the other side. Of course the light just is not going to work. But yeah, the leveling plug is right there. So. Probably could have done it without really lifting it up too high, but. Hey guys, so I've been messing with this thing for about two hours, and this is probably the most sick, twisted um, jigsaw puzzle I've ever done with my, in my life. But basically what I did was use a jack to jack up the transmission, and then I was able to get a little tiny, can't really see it, Allen wrench on there. It's actually an eight millimeter um, metric, but I didn't have a metric that was short enough to fit in there. So I had to use a 15, I forget what met, or Imperial size it was, but it was pretty much the same size, just a little bit shorter. And then I had to use my breaker bar as a lever on the frame rail to get the, enough torque on it to actually break it free. But I've broken it free now, so I'm gonna go ahead and open it up the rest of the way and drain the oil out. But yeah, that probably took me like two hours. There's just no room in here. This is the first time that Saab Engineering has let me down. Hey guys, so that was an absolute nightmare trying to get that thing out. Um, I think I showed you before how I got it out, but I had to like jam a, the smallest Allen wrench I had in there and then use my uh, breaker bar as like a pry bar to get enough torque on it to break it free. Finally broke it free, it took me like two hours trying to figure it out. I also had to jack the transmission up to give me as much room as I could between the where the drain plug was and the frame rail. Um, so I got the plug out, I just cleaned it off. Uh, there wasn't much on here as far as metallic particles. There's just like a little bit of metallic sludge or whatever on here, but it's probably normal for a car with 150,000 miles. Um, oil looked pretty nasty though, so I think it's gonna take well to getting this changed and uh, hopefully improve my shifter feel a little bit. Um, I was just, so far I've been impressed with Saab engineering, but wow, that was, what a stupid design that was. I don't know if this transmission was not originally designed for this car or something, but they put it like an inch away from the frame rail and then they put an Allen um, head on it, like, or a hex head on it. How do they expect you to ever get it off? Like if you're gonna put it that close to the frame rail then at least put like a, um, a hex on it or a whatever, like a normal bolt head so you can get a spinner wrench on it. Or just put it on the front or back of the transmission like every other car company does. I don't know what they're thinking, but I'm gonna try and get this back in and then I'm gonna measure out how much oil I took out and I'm gonna put in the same plus a little bit extra because I um, lost a little bit when I changed the CV axle a few months back. So this isn't gonna be super scientific, but this uh, used oil jug I have is exactly at three quarts. So I'm just gonna funnel what I got out into here and then I'll see uh, how much it has in it afterwards. And then I know how much to add. So according to this rudimentary approach, um, it only had one quart of oil in it, which seems like it was really low or I didn't get it all out. So um, I'm gonna look online and see what the actual volume is. And then I'm probably gonna just gonna do like a liter and a half or a quart and a half. I think that'll be good. It's weird that gear oil doesn't smell. Usually gear oil is nasty. Um, I don't know. Kind of weird. All right, so I looked online and the fill volume is a liter and a half, which is pretty much what I expected. Um, so I have my actual GM uh, synthetic manual transmission fluid. And I will say, even though I cursed Saab's name tonight, it's nice having a top fill for the transmission. I'm used to usually having to pump it in, pump it in through the leveling plug. So there's one positive tonight.
All right, so it took a little bit longer than I expected, but it was successful. The car runs like a champ now, did a few hard pulls, uh, no check engine lie, it's building way more boost now. It's amazing how much power that car has uh, for front wheel drive. It's even in second gear when the boost kicks in, it will spin its tires all the way to red line if you're not easy. Um, so that was a success there. Uh, I wish I didn't buy the new blow off valve without realizing that the vacuum line had just popped off. But anyways, uh, now it's back on and zip tied, so hopefully it will stay. And I would say like, probably like the three biggest things where you can fix on a car and actually like really notice the difference is by far one of them for a manual transmission car is doing the um, manual transmission fluid because it should have silky smooth where before it was notchy and hard to get in gear sometimes. Now it's super smooth, uh, so I'm happy about that. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you guys uh, have a good one. And if you like what we're doing here, then maybe you can help us out and uh, like and subscribe and do all the normal YouTube stuff. And if you uh, have any questions, put them in the comments down below. And if you want to dislike and provide your constructive criticism, uh, by all means, please do it. All right, hope you guys have a good one. Bye.